The current language of English has had a complex history involving the Germanic tribesmen known as the Anglo-Saxons. For the most part, England is extremely isolated from the rest of the European continent. It is separated from Europe by the English Channel. This separation made it harder to communicate and to get invaded from other groups of people. Most European languages can be traced back to the Proto-Indo-European people in about 5000 BC. Though time, through time it spread through Central Asia and from there it went on and on. By around 1000 BC, the Indo-European language was spread to the edge of the European continent. Throughout the spread of the language, versions started to occur. Dozens of other languages uh, groups emerged. English was a part of the group that splintered from the Germanic branch of the Proto-Indo-European language. The spread of the language occurred until even the Celts started speaking a distinct variation of the Proto-Indo-European language. Var variations in language led for invasions and the evolution in different languages. In England, invasions and other changes led to the current English language. The original inhabitants of England, a group of hunter-gatherers known as the Celts, they arrived in Britain around 800 BC. Various Celtic tribes lived in Britain. Although they were all from different tribes, the Celts were united by a common culture, religion, and more importantly, language. They grew so widespread and popular that by 300 BC, they were one of the most popular branches of the Indo-European language. Later, more people started to immigrate to Britain. For example, the Beaker people who moved into the British Isles and are most famously known for being the presumed people to building Stonehenge. The Celts continued to live in, British, in the British Isles, but they were later replaced by the Roman soldiers. In 55 BC, under Julius Caesar, Romans were sent to dispatch and control Celtic tribes. For the next 400 years, the Celtic people were subjugated to Roman rule, although they were continuously rebellious. Uh, the Romans at this time never replaced or significantly impacted the Celtic language. About 200 loanwords were used by Roman merchants. The most, important that Latin, the most important impact that Latin had was in the larger upper class towns. Although multiple attacks, after multiple other attacks, the Romans left Britain in 410 AD. The Celts were left back in charge uh, after their withdrawal. One of the most important impacts on the English language were the Germanic tribesmen. They were, the most, they were more influential than Romans and the Celts. After the Roman withdrawal, the Celts were unable to protect, them, protect themselves from other attacks. Some of the first Germanic tribesmen to show up were the Jutes that settled on the east coast around 430 AD. However, they were not the last. From an area known as Angeln came the Angles who settled mostly on the north and east coast. Then came the strong, warlike Saxons from the northwestern part of Germany. They settled on the southern end of England. No, the All the Germanic tribesmen started to settle down and be embedded in Britain. Their permanent residence caused the Celts to gradually move out. All the Germanic tribesmen spoke variations of the West Germanic language. Although there were multiple dialects, each could be somewhat understood by other Germanic tribesmen. The Angle di a dialect is particularly similar to Old and Modern English. The influence of the West Germanic language and of its dialects was not seen immediately. The influence was seen across multiple generations. Celtic tribes would be overrun with Germanic tribes. This occurred mostly in populated areas. Remote regions were mostly Celtic, and between the two, the Celts and the Germanic people did not get along very well. Both saw the other as invaders. The Celts continued to resist the Germanic people, but they were slowly pushed back to Scotland, Wales, and even France. With the Germanic, uh, with the Germanic tribes in mostly in charge, they settled into seven smaller kingdoms. The kingdoms would flux in power over time. The warlike Saxons were the most dominant group that led the kingdoms. The Angles were also a very prominent group. England started to be known as Angleland. The emergent language started to be known as English. It evolved from just a dialect into a language. It developed, lasted to being an individual language around 600 AD. After time, dialects of Old English started to emerge. There became four major dialects. In 597 AD, another invasion occurred. This was of a religious kind. Fifty missionaries were sent from Rome to England to convert the pagan Anglo-Saxons into Christianity. The spread of the Christianity caused differences in culture and literature. Previously, the Anglo-Saxons had, had used runes as writing. However, Christian miss missionaries introduced the Roman alphabet. Rune sounds were even incorporated into the new language. However, many of the new words uh, within Old English were just related to religion. There wasn't much else added to the Old English language. 
Later, in the 8th to 11th century, there started to be a boom in literature. Anglo-Saxon poems became popular. Old literature helps linguists understand how English has changed. For example, Old English had nouns with three genders that could be inflicted for up to five cases. After time, these th types of things have disappeared. As time passed, Old English evolved as well. For example, in the 6th century, the Anglo-Saxon sk changed to sh. Another example is the vowel shift of the 7th century. Sounds started to be more pronounced in the front of the mouth. The most affected vowel was I. Anglo-Saxon words eventually died out. About 85 of the 30,000 of the Anglo-Saxon words disappeared. However, some of the most important modern English words come from Old England, even though the pronunciation and spelling may have changed. In the 8th century, Vikings started to make raids along the east coast of Britain. Vikings were vicious, and eventually the Anglo-Saxons signed a treaty with the Vikings. The Norsemen were given control of North and West uh, England. The Vikings spoke Old Norse, which was somewhat similar to Anglo-Saxon due to it being a Germanic language. The accents and pronunciation in modern Northern England was influenced by the Norse. Scandinavian words were gradually introduced. These words are ex still extremely used. After Viking raids, and the English language started to get more cemented. English slowly evolved into the language it is today. Old English is developed from a Germanic language. It is from a branch that includes Latin, Indo-Aryan, Slavic languages, and Greek. It is mostly closely, closely related to Northumbrian, West Saxon, and Anglian dialects. It was also affected by the language of Vikings and Norman invaders later on. Most of the vocabulary from Anglo-Saxon of English derived from the Germanic language. Prior to the invasion of Germans, people were speaking a mix between Celts and Roman languages, which had some impact on vocabulary. The religious vocabulary associated with Christianity was influenced by Latin. Over time, the Old English vocabulary began to disappear due to the influence of Vikings and Normans. Only 1% of Old English vocabulary remains in the modern English. Old English categorized their nouns using gender. These gender refers to nouns that are masculine, feminine, and neuter. Keep in mind that it is used for grammatical usage and has nothing to do with the biological, biological gender. Unlike, unlike case endings or numbers, genders are fixed and never change. For example, guman, meaning man, is considered to be masculine. Jifu, uh, meaning gift, is considered feminine. And skip, meaning ship, is neutered. Each noun has its own gender, so they have to be remembered by their gender. The nouns ending can vary a lot of times. First, you have to figure out the case, such as nominative, accusative, etc. You would also have to determine the number of the nouns, whether it is singular or plural. Lastly, you would have to consider the gender of the noun. After all of that, you would get the endings for a noun. Take jifu, for example. The cases, which are nominative, accusative, genitive, and dative, has to be taken into account. Then you, you can see that they are split into singular and plural. Much like we add S to a plural noun in modern English, Old English completely changed the word. As you can see, jifu is singular and jifa is plural. Finally, the gender is taken into account. From all of those criteria, a declension chart can be created. Old English used letters that we don't use in modern English. English, such as these symbols. This symbol, meaning thorn, in Old English, in Old Runic alphabet, futhark. It is pronounced tsa, um, and even though modern English doesn't use it anymore, there are still places such as Icelandic uh, that use it. Over time, thorn is replaced with th because it looked identical to the Gothic style script. This symbol was used in Old English as a substitute letter when transcribing to Latin letters. Ash was first known as a diphthong, A-E, but then became its own single letter as Ash. The Futhark runes used Ash as an honorary English letter. This symbol originated from Irish and means F. S is related to thorn, but the TH is pronounced differently. An example of eth would be thought or thing, and thorn would be this or them. You can hear that there is a difference between thorn and eth. In Old English, both thorn and eth were distinguished based on their pronunciation 
but over time, F slowly disappeared as more people pronounced Thorn for Bow. Old English wasn't really a set language, or at least it didn't start out that way. Rather, it was a classification of the four main dialects spoken in that area. These dialects include Northumbrian, Mercian, Kentish, and West Saxon. That said, these, dial these dialects did not just appear as soon as the Germanic peoples invaded. However, they developed as different groups of people began to distance themselves from others and formed smaller circles of communication. This formed a better environment to create variations of the same West Germanic language they spoke in their homeland. While many other dialects may have existed in the smaller communities around England, later years established four main dialects that were spoken over the seven kingdoms in the area. The Norse saw the rise of Northumbrian, a language with Old Norse influences that was spoken around the Angle territory of Northumbria. Mercian, the main dialect spoken in and around the Midlands, which was also Angle territory. Kentish, which is the main dialect of the Jute invaders and West Saxon, the main dialect for Old English. Spoken around the Saxon territories of Essex, Wessex, and Sussex, the, dialogue, the dialect eventually expanded to the surrounding territories as the West Saxon people grew in power. West Saxon becoming the primary dialect of Old English can be attributed to the warlike quality of the Saxons. After arriving in England, the Saxons began expanding their territory, eventually forming their own nation and establishing political dominance over the others. Because of how prominent the Saxons were, most written communication was in West Saxon dialect. They eventually occupied their own kingdom in this country called Angloland, or Angloland, meaning land of the Angles. This may sound familiar, or it may even remind you of other modern countries. That's because the name Angloland is where we got the modern day reading of England. West Saxon was the popular dialect of the Anglolanders until around 600, when its identity changed from a dialect to a separate language. This new language was called Englisk and eventually became the standard Old English for most people of the region. This was because it had the most power backing it in the form of the Saxons' military power, along with the highest population of speakers. English as a language was vastly different from the English we know and use today. This happened because of multiple factors, from invasions from outsiders with different languages to taking written characters from Greek, Latin, and other older sources. Old English had a different grammar structure, different dialects, and even used different characters than the English we know now. Looking back into the history of our language and comparing it to modern English paints a vivid picture of how our language, like many other languages, has evolved.